237. I am your host, Keith Andrew. Long hair is a talented and beautiful Thunder Rosa, and I just want to say thank you for joining us. No, thanks for inviting me. <laughs> now, for people who want to know what Uncensored is, Uncensored is my way of showing people that even with a warning disability, I can still overcome labels that people throw at me. And at the same time, I'm able to turn myself into a perfect example for people out there dealing with any type of disabilities or learning disabilities that you should never give up or have people label you and you should prove to them you can still mouth something no matter what. Now with that being said, it's a half hour, 45 minutes every time. You can say anything you want. And starting off, what can you tell us about yourself? Um, first, I am really tired. It's been really hard this last couple of weeks since I returned to Japan just to like adjust from work and training and stuff. But um, I'm happy to be here. I was gonna have Godzilla with me right now, but I left it in the car. That's how tired I was today. So he was, he, I took him to work with me and he was really kind to the clients and the clients like him a lot. Um, I've been wrestling for a year and seven months and my debut was in November. So I'm working pretty hard. I want to, I want to do a lot in this business. Yeah, that's awesome. I don't want to skip ahead, but I'm going to ask you a lot of easy questions. Then I'm going to ask you how you started your career. And then you can ask me anything you want and talk about anything once it's your time. But I do want to point out one thing. That's amazing Spider-Man poster behind you. It's really cool. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, here. In, I, I live in Oakland, so people recycle things. So they left that big poster outside. And, uh, and my friends and I were outside. And I'm like, dude, this is so cool. And I'm like, yeah, I have space. So now it's on my wall. <laughs> If I could give you one real word of advice, I used to hang stuff up all the time on our walls with a lot of staplers. It, don't ask me why. Basically, I, when my parents had to paint my room over, the guy says, well, what happened to this room? It's like thousands of staples. <laughs> so now when I have like a picture like that, it, uh, I was going to yeah. say, you should just put it in a nice picture frame. Well, afterwards, I do have a couple pictures I'd like to show you, but, you know, I think it would look nicer in a picture frame. That's giving you my honest opinion, but... but. Yeah, well, this, this one is, like, uh, too long, too big to have it in a picture frame. It's, like, my size, a little bigger than I am, so I couldn't have it in a picture frame. <laughs> but everything else, I think, I have it in a picture frame. All right. <laughs> Now, the next question I was going to ask you, when you were in high school, were you athletic, and did you do any sports? That's the first question. And when you were in college, were you a study nerd or a party animal? Uh, I didn't really do a lot of sports. I tried soccer when I was in Mexico, but we didn't have to work, so I had to quit on that. But in, when I came to the United States, I, I tried theater. And I really got into it, so um, I was I was always an nerd, so um, I always tried to like get a straight A's and stuff like that. So, but sports, I like to play sports in the street. I with my friends, but I never nothing organized. In college, I continued to try different classes. You know, in college, in community college, they have like tennis and uh, volleyball and basketball and all the stuff. So I took classes like that. And then, um, but I was like focusing a lot more on my academics. So because I wanted to finish college, I was, I was the first one to graduate from high school and I was the first one who graduated from college. But I was always trying to like beat everybody and be the best, you know, kind of like <laughs> with wrestling now, I'm trying to be the best if possible. No, but what I've seen of you, I think you're amazing. I think you have a lot of potential. Thank you. Now, next. I'm hard. I'm trying to... <laughs> well, one more easy question, then we can move over to the wrestling side. Then, then I'm going to uh -huh. pass the show over to you. Is Did he ever get the chance to do one of those human pyramids or not a human pyramid, girl? Human pyramid? No, I don't think so. Uh -uh. I'm a big fan of that. I know I'm a loser. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't, I don't think so. I didn't do it. And I see your plug in the toy you have. 
Now, do you refer? Uh, do you let me rephrase that? Do you uh, refer to that as an American term or the Japanese term? You know, some people call it Ghidra, some people call it King Adora. Uh, what do you refer to it as? Ghidra. Ghidra. <laughs> it's always better to keep a classic. Yeah. <laughs> Now, the next question, I know I asked you this last time, but for people who want to know, for women wrestlers that were a big influence for you, who were your idols who influenced you, and who do you really want to have as a tag team partner or a dream match with? Um, when I first started, you know, I was, I was watching a lot of, like I mentioned to you before, like Trish Stratus, like definitely like how she market herself or how like they help her market her unless she's out of the business you know she has her yoga studio and like so she's still doing something with sports and I like that a lot um Lita does the same thing and I have I've had a conversation with her and I like how like she I asked her like after she she uh, retired what did she do she said she invested money so as women know what they're doing you know after after wrestling it's not always all about wrestling so that's the people that I look up to, you know, the business woman. Uh, definitely Cheer Little Melissa is uh, one of the people that I look up to. I had the opportunity to live with her in Japan for a couple of weeks, and I learned a lot from her, not only from her wrestling, and um, but also the business-wise. She's super, like, she's one of the smartest women that I ever met, and I really admire that. Uh, in terms of wrestling, I will say uh, Sarah Stock. Sarita and um, Sarah Del Rey. I love their style, and they also been in Japan, and and they've been all over the world. And now, you know, I think both are gonna be working for W. Are working for WWE, so it's pretty awesome. All right, now I know I asked you this, but just for the record, what titles would you like to chance to win? And do you support my idea for a women's world heavyweight championship? Um, the titles that I would like to win. That's a good question. I really, I really don't know. I mean, if it comes to the opportunity, and if I work for WWE, of course, the Divas Division or NXT. Um, and yeah, I think the heavyweight women's division. We have, we have a lot of uh, women that are. Um, you know, tall, and then they're bigger than the one, one thirty buck. You know, like that they deserve to like have matches with somebody. You know, almost like their size, kind of sort of, because it will look super amazing. And you know, I don't know. It will be like I, every time I, I I tell people I'm a wrestler, they they always ask me in my class weight, and I'm like class weight. Like this is not like you know, <laughs> it's not UFC. But I think it will be interesting because that will make it more realistic. I don't know if that's where you want to go or that's your idea. Oh, I, well, you know, for people like uh, two questions, you know, uh, well, statements really. You know how WWE has the WWE heavyweight title mm -hmm. and it was the Diva Revolution that's up and that was I want to actually talk to you about. I think the women should have their own heavyweight championship. I know WWE had the women's title, but they retired that after 50 years or about. And now they have the Divas Championship, but it's not really the same. In WCW, they had the World Heavyweight title. I think women's wrestling should have the same thing. There should be, like, there should be competition. Like, WCW, they had the World Belt. In the WWF, they had the Heavyweight. And now let's uh, Global Force and WWE and TNA, let's kind of relevant because they're growing out of business. You know, WWE has their group of belts and then their main belt, the heavyweight. The point, the point is that the women should have their own heavyweight title. That's why I bring up the support my idea of the women. It doesn't matter WWE or Global Force or us. Do you think one of those companies should have a primary belt? That would stand out. I know, like, eventually you're going to win the women's title or the Divas title. Mm -hmm. But wouldn't you like to have the chance to be known as one of those women who got the chance to become uh, the women's world heavyweight champion? Wouldn't that sound a lot cooler 
been saying ear med Carter. Yeah, I see what you're saying. In Japan, definitely they have something similar to that. Like Stardom has one, two, three, like different titles. And the the main one is the red one, the one that Kairi had, and uh, Miko has just one. And then they have the high speed champion, and then they had um, they have like so many different names. Everybody has you know the opportunity to win a championship, and the main one is like, like the red one. So it's it's. I mean, in Japan, th- things are different, and the business is different, so, like, women had more uh, opportunities to win different titles. But I, I see what you're saying. It will be, for a lot of people, will, they will say it will be more recruitable to have something like that instead of the Divas Championship. But, you know, I think I think I met in an interview that I, I had recently that, Divas is the, the word diva is very popular, right? With people that are not in wrestling. So right now, what they're trying to do is open their markets to people that are not just like wrestling fans, because that means that they can sell more, regardless if they're watching wrestling or not. Which, in a way, is a, a smart thing to do. Right now, it's all about popularity, you know, views, likes. It's all about social media, and if they can hit those people that are not necessarily watching wrestling, but they still are like, kind of getting their interest, that's all that I need. And like, you know, prestige and all that stuff come second in terms of like the championships and stuff like that. So that's my two cents on that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got actually two more questions, then I'm gonna pass the show over to you. And the first one I was gonna ask you is. I always thought this was a really cool concept. I'm a fan of Dragon Ball Z, mm-hmm. and um, both on the ball on the subject. Are you a fan of Dragon Ball Z? I used to watch it when I was little, but in Spanish, I never understood. Because I was watching it like in pieces. I would watch like episode four, and I missed like the four episodes. So I was just like, oh my god, why is everybody so into it? But um, I like I like the graphics. They're pretty cool. <laughs> Now, the idea, well, while on the different languages, I watch a lot of things in different languages because uh, the, I guess to say some things in American, so people are link, link too sensitive, so they edited a lot of things. Mm-hmm. But if you're going to do it right, you might as well enjoy it. So I like the unedited stuff. That's why I, I watch it in Spanish, I watch it in Japanese, in American, so I compare it saying, okay, you have three of them. What's got to be different out of the free? Mm-hmm. But and that's not what I was going to ask you. I was going to say, wouldn't it be a great idea if there was a world martial arts tournament? Wouldn't you just love to be a part of that? Yeah, why not? <laughs> <laughs> and that's saying, you know, there's a lot of wrestling and MMA and UFC. Why not stop with the human cockfighting? And I almost got into a fight with someone. I interviewed over that. <laughs> um, long story short, he he's an a, MMA fighter, and he I mentioned human cockfighting, and he most got a, he got upset at me, but I, but I have a learning disability, I just <laughs> blurred out. But I'm saying you guys have a great format, and you're competing, you're trying to compete with the WWE, TNA, Global Force. So why not open that? format and do something that's got to stand out that's got to be something different I don't know they, they, they do their own thing but <laughs> now I'm going to pass the show over to you was there any subjects you would like to talk about or anything that gets you fired up or passionate about well there's a lot of things I know that you, you're talking about you know disabilities and uh, people that have disabilities can you know have a normal life that's one of the things that I think I mentioned to you before. I, it, it, I'm very passionate about. I work in the mental health business, and I've been doing it for about five, six years. So, um, like, one of the reasons why my name is Thunder Rosa is because I used to work in a rehab facility for teenagers, and it was called Thunder Road. So, like, a lot of the things that I do and, and, like, when I try to motivate others is because... I remember those who passed away, my kids that I work with, and they were taken by drugs and, and the streets and all those problems like that. So I just wanted to, I don't know, maybe we can talk about that. We can talk about, you know, also your struggles in life and how, you know, people are open 
open-minded and, and they're willing to help have, you know, made an impact in your life, I think that'll be something cool to talk about. Sure. Well, like I said, this is your show. Uh, I'm passing it over to you, and this is your time. I'm um, always said your show, but this is your hour, and you can <laughs> ask me whatever you want. I'm an open book. I have nothing to hide. Yeah, well, it's, it was, it's just such a t touchy subject. You know, um, I work with teenagers and young adults, and and it's, it's sometimes it's really hard to, like, go back and like look at their pictures and and see that they're not here like right now i just woke up and you know Rhoda piper just passed away so i was just like oh my god i'm like rumbling right now but it's, it's just i think about them every day when i'm in the ring and i think about you know like the struggles that i'm going through in wrestling and like this and then just think about their struggles that they go through in an everyday life you know with drugs with alcohol with you know family problems and stuff like that and, and it's just like it motivates me to keep going and to continue to make a, an impact and when I get text messages or emails or Facebook messages of girls that are young and they keep telling me that oh you're such an inspiration you're a motivation you know that's one of the things that makes me want to keep going because this business is really hard especially for women you know like do you have so many obstacles and like People always are criticizing you because they, because of whatever reason, like they think that you were doing that or you were doing this guy, another reason why you got that opportunity, yeah, you name it. But it's like when you stay focused and you remember what you're doing things for, I think that's what is gives me focus and motivated. Because otherwise, I think I would have quit a long time ago. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and for people with disabilities. You know, I'm no prize myself. I'm just, I know I have a lot of issues. <laughs> I'm not crazy. You know, a lot of people, you know, a lot of people say it, it would debate that, or some people say I'm full of shit. <laughs> but um, I like to push the envelope. You know, I'm like CM Punk. I'm straight edge. I don't drink. I don't smoke. I sometimes I like to push the envelope, you know, breaking the fourth wall. <laughs> but I would like to be, I uh, try to be different. I was labeled as mentally challenged, retarded. Uh, I have ADD, ADHD, blind was on my glasses. Uh, I use, kind of still do have a speech impediment. If you notice, I, I try to hide it, but I kind of swear my words. Mm -hmm. But I do that when I'm nervous. I uh, I hesitate more than normal normal people. But basically, the whole point of the show is to say, "Hey, I didn't go to college. I can't have a normal life like like for you, for you for a perfect example. I can't have a normal life like what you have. Yeah. But look at what I'm able to accomplish. Look at what I'm capable of doing." And now, if I so, can do this, yeah, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, 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 I wasn't I was going to interrupt you because that's a really good point. But I want to ask you, because this is one thing that I struggle the most when I'm working with this population, is is motivation. What motivated you to make the change? I was having a conversation with somebody that I really care for, and that this person in particular is going through a very, very difficult situation, you know, and where because of one of physical, a physical impediment is not allowing that person to do what they love to do. But how is that you decided to say, you know, I'm gonna be different and I'm gonna do this. Did it take you many, many years? Was it like an epiphany that you had or what was it? Well, to tell you the story, I can just give you the highlights. I don't want to bitch too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 2004, I joined the audio visual department. And one movie well, was on the TV. Apparently, if you get the idea to have a TV in the room, so a lot of people use it as a hangout. Does mm -hmm. a complete other subject, and I can tell you some other time. But um, I walked in the room, and on the TV, they were playing Almost Famous. And from, say, 2004, so from 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 
10, so six years after 2016, I wanted to go on tour with a band. I wanted to be a roadie. I wanted to, if you're interested, I would like to be your personal assistant. <laughs> but I, that's what I mean. I wanted to be like a personal assistant and a roadie. And I was working in retail. And this was about 2007 at that point. I was looking for an excuse to leave because I was getting burnt out. Unfortunately, there was this misunderstanding. Basically, they said I was wink wink stalking someone and I that's far from the truth. Basically, I'll give you a perfect example. You're the new girl and you come in, hey Keith, how are you? Oh, working, we can be buddy buddies and you can tell me anything you want. And then you would go in the back and say, oh, Keith is stalking me. Keith is doing the best. Keith's doing the best. He's making me uncomfortable. I will get yelled at. I can't snap my fingers. But as soon as I'm back on the sales floor, and this is a true story. I'm not pulling this out of my ass. As soon as I'm back on the sales floor, and like I said, I'm using you for a perfect example, you would be there saying, oh, we're just fucking with you. We're having fun with you. We know you have a warning disability. Don't take it so personally. It's just a game. We're having fun. So this went on and on and on and on. And I was getting sick. You know, I spent more time in the bathroom throwing up or having a panic attack. Good news is I was being paid for my time. <laughs> but the bad news is my health was getting messed up <laughs> yeah yep. but i developed severe i had pack attacks growing up but this really brought it out to the extreme like i couldn't do anything without you know just had a throwing up it's just i it took me a whole year to recover and at that time i used um certain people i won't mention them because they think i'm ass kissers but I used them and they um, they had a warden disability at one time and they overcame it and now they're traveling and doing these other things and I said if they can do it I can do it too so one day I was like you know look at it like this can't go to college can't go to school I can't drive I'm probably going to be a burden for someone one day down the road Screw it. I'm going to show people that even with a warning disability, I can still amount to something before I die. And it's that's how I came up with the idea. I just, for the longest time, and I don't mean to ramble on, I apologize. I was using, yeah. I used my disability as a crutch. And um, one day I was like, you know what? I'm going to use it as a strength instead of a weakness. That's pretty awesome. Do you know how difficult is for many of my kids and many of the people that I work with to understand that part because you know they don't see beyond their nose and they just see what is in front of them and all the issues because there's so many things you know that they go through but it's so beautiful that you are doing that you know which is using it to move forward to push yourself forward because a lot of people don't do that and it's it takes a lot of balls to just say this I'm gonna do something different because it's true man it's true some people some, some kids that I work with this I know that they're gonna be in and out of the system it's really sad yeah I agree with you now wrapping up I'm gonna ask you um, if you have any funny stories you like to share but I would like to uh, point something out that uh, today's a very <laughs> I just trying to find a word for it. I didn't want to sound like an asshole, but I kind of almost did. <laughs> um, for people who want to know that today, uh, one of the wrestlers, Rowdy of Rowdy Piper, passed away. And I was wondering if you got the chance to ever meet him. And do you remember any funny skits that he ever did? No, I didn't get to meet him. But I remember one, one time I was watching the... Uh, The network, the WWE network, and then there was a point where he's getting an interview and he starts destroying the whole entire set, and it was hilarious. He was just so mad. I don't remember what, what was the um, 
the skit about, but I remember just he he was just went off and like started throwing the thing. I'm like, dang, because my friend was like, you gotta learn how to cut promos and how to be intense. I was like, I'm gonna show you some stuff. So I watched that. It was pretty funny. But yeah, I'm really sad. I mean, Dusty Rose just passed away not too long ago, and now it's him. He's like, gonna like, cause he looked pretty healthy too, you know. Yeah, he did. You know, it was like only like a week ago, maybe two weeks ago. He was, uh, I thought he was going to do something with Stone Cold because, you know, supposedly Austin got him kicked off the radio, but I really don't know the whole story. And I thought they were going to turn something into that. But what I remember from Piper, I remember, uh, what was it, or was WrestleMania 5? Sucks. <laughs> <laughs> I was saying, I think it was WrestleMania 5 or WrestleMania 6, where Rowdy Piper came out when he he, uh, he did uh, what people call it blackface and where uh-huh. one side of his face was white and the other side was black uh-huh. so I just thought that was pretty funny but uh, one of his things he used to say is you do not throw rocks at someone with a machine gun <laughs> <laughs> but stuff like that it's but like you said he was he was 61 but he, it's the same, you know, he actually passed away yesterday, but the news broke today. But Rowdy Piper, a Hall of Famer, and one of the greatest professional wrestlers ever in the history. But wrapping up, do you have any funny stories you like to share, or any pranks you pulled on in your fellow wrestlers? Um, well, there is one thing I want to share. Um... Uh, Stardom is coming to LA in, um, in October 16 and 18, and I'm really excited because my sisters from another mother and from another country are coming, and I'm really happy. I'm going to see my trainer, Yoshire. Um, Shirley Rommel is going to be there. Um, my sister, Starfire. Um, Hudson Envy. Chris Wolf. And so many others are coming in. And if you have any questions, please go to my web, web website. My website is not up yet, so go to my Facebook page. Their information is there. And it's uh, the stuff are, you, you can get your tickets on Eventbrite. Um, and I'm really, what's, what's a good story to tell? I was just thinking today um, when I was in Tokyo and, I, and we used to go to training. It was Starfire. She's from Mexico. Nikki Storm. Who had the pleasure to talk to this morning? We surprised her in an interview. She was really happy about it. She sent me like ten voice messages after the interview. <laughs> it was pretty cute. Um, you know, in Tokyo, like people are very serious. Very, very serious. Everybody's on their phones. Uh, very quiet. So, <laughs> so Mickey and Starfire will like start dancing on the train or start singing till people get really, really annoyed. They'll be like. <laughs> excuse me, excuse me, you guys need to be quiet. And we're like, okay. Then we all just kept singing. <laughs> and then one time, one guy was like, he came and told us once. And the second time, he's like, I already told you guys, you guys need to be quiet. And we're like, this is a public place. We can do whatever we want. And then Nikki Storm starts like, bro, someone deport me, man. Someone deport me. I can't take this country anymore. <laughs> I was like, you don't want me to sing? Do you want me to sing? Okay. And she used to go crazy. We just like start laughing. It's still Every time we used to get mad, we used to say, "Can somebody deport me now? Like, <laughs> like can I just leave? Because it's so different." But yeah, they're not they're not used to see that. And one time, there's another one. The metro's always like the stories that we had. Uh, you know, I paint my face right, right. Like, with the shirt skull. So I, we went to a house uh, uh, with a friend at a friend's house, and my friend was like bugging me and saying, "Can you please paint your face before you?" so I can take a picture with you and I'm like yeah whatever so I painted my face I honestly didn't want to take it off because one I had to cut a couple promos and two it took me like 45 minutes to do the face paint so my friend and I were like getting on the train and we're just waiting for the train to go so I'm just like on my phone right looking people come to me they'll like look like this and then leave and then one guy he got mad at me like he just looked at me he said something Japanese and he left and I was like, oh my God. We get off the train, and my friend is like, Starfire is just like, dude, people are getting mad at you. And I'm like, I don't care. 
then uh, we're walking towards our house and this lady starts just like blurring some like stuff and she just leaves super mad and I'm like looking at her like really crazy now and I'm like what is wrong with people and then some guy's like because of your face pain you're scary <laughs> and I'm like oh my god it's like you couldn't do anything out of the normal because everybody will be super mad at you all the time so that's my a couple of things that we did in in Tokyo, just piss people off for, for no reason, I guess. <laughs>